Hey guys, how's it going? Enrique here, team leader with PRG Real Estate Broker by EXP. And today we got a special training for you guys. Um, the market is tough, guys. There's no doubt right now. Like getting buyers in contract, getting them to move forward uh, and close deals in a tough market. That's really what this training is all about. And really going to be diving deep into the strategies that our team has used to have a lot of success. Um, and really how it's not uncommon for agents on our team to be getting two, three, four, even five deals a month in contract uh, using these same exact strategies that we're going to talk about today. Um, uh, I'm going to try to keep this training short, maybe about 30 minutes tops, but we're going to go deep into some of the strategies that are working today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick introduction on you know, who I am and why you should be listening to me. Um, PRG Real Estate, we service the Silicon Valley, Bay Area, uh, and North San Jose. Over 200 million worth of real estate sold in 2022. Um, since our inception in 2013, easily over a thousand homes that we've sold, and we are one of the Zillow Flex partners here in our area, um, where Zillow Flex is hand selected. Only a handful of teams here in our area. We are one of them, and we have amongst one of the highest customer uh, ratings here in our area, and we're a top performer for Zillow Flex here in our market. Uh, online, over 500 five-star reviews. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into those. Uh, we're a well-respected well team in our marketplace. And we really have a reputation, guys, for being able to take agents from brand new and turn them into top producers here in our market. And we're extremely proud of that. Um, so a little bit about me, guys, and who I am. Enrique Medellin, like I said, CEO, uh, team leader, broker, associate. Um, and I'm the co-founder of PRG Real Estate. A little bit about my background. So I started in the banking industry and um, worked at the bank for a few years. And then I got into real estate and I got, I focused more on the mortgage side originally. Got licensed in 2004 and was doing really well at that. And then in 2008, the market crashed. We all heard about that. And we shifted over to more of a foreclosure prevention, helping people save their home from foreclosure and started getting into short sales and things of that sort. Um, from 2008 and on. Um, and during that time, guys, I was a top producing real estate agent um, for many, many years after that, selling 30 to 40 homes a year consistently. And I decided to build a, a high level team back in 2013. So I got my broker license. We started PRG Real Estate back then. And fast forward till today, guys, we lead a team of over 35 agents, um, sales agents, over 10 staff that support our agents. We got two office locations. Uh, here in San Jose. And um, a side note, I also have some uh, experience in investing in real estate. So my partner and I have done over uh, 85 uh, fix and flips here in our area. So uh, a, a lot of knowledge, a lot of background into the industry, guys. Um, and that's all sounds great and all, but really what's important, guys, and I always like to reflect on this is this is really what it's all about, right? It's all about, you know, working hard, playing hard, building a successful business so that we can spend more time with the ones that we love. Uh, you see some pictures here of my family, uh, my kids, my girlfriend here, uh, my parents, right? We like to spend time on the water. We like to travel uh, and just really enjoy that quality time, guys. And that's really what this is all about, right? Selling a lot of homes is great, but it's not worth it if you're not spending time with the loved ones. So I just want to point that out. Now, how do you know if this is the right training for you? Right? Why are you going to spend time, your 30 minutes, listening to what I have to say? I want to make sure this is the right training for you. So this is for you if the following maybe applies, right? You're frustrated with buyers, you know, today using the interest rates, you know, the rising interest rates, right? We've all seen that in the last six months, using that as an excuse to stop shopping, right? A lot of buyers putting things on hold. Maybe you don't know where your next deal is going to come from, Right? Um, you don't know your, where your next deal is going to come from because you probably don't have a consistent flow of leads or opportunity and it's, it's tough for you. Um, you may even find that buyers are not willing to work with you uh, exclusively, right? It feels like they're jumping around from agent to agent. Maybe they're just using you to show homes and they end up going and writing offers with someone else. You might even been ghosted by a few buyers where you book appointments and they don't show up. Um, also, you may be spending a lot of time showing homes to buyers. Um, where it seems like an endless amount of homes and they're just not moving forward, not wanting to write offers, right? And you're starting to notice, you know, that more and more business is going to those top producers that you follow, 
the people that you see online, the ones that are winning the awards, there's more business going to them, um, you know, and they're getting all the business, right? And, and there's less going to those other agents, right? Um, and you just can't seem to get buyers to move forward with writing offers in today's market because, you know, the market is competitive and it's had some, it's fair share of challenges, right? So this is for you if, if those things apply. Now, why does it matter today, right? Like, why are we putting this out today in the market, right? Um, it's all about timing, right? Because this is what's going on today. In the last year, in the last couple of years, um, we've seen that the consumers have been driven more and more towards online, right? Because of COVID, because of things going on in the world, more and more is it important for consumers to do everything online, right? How they find their agents, how they pick homes, all those different things. It's all online centric, right? We see interest rates have gone up, right? And the media, if you turn on the news, it's all about like the real estate market's crashing, recession, all those things, which is causing a lot of buyers, you know, to put their home search on hold. Um, those good old days of simply like answering the phone, showing a, a client a home, throwing in a crazy offer, way over asking price with no contingencies. Um, it's not working no more, right? That's not happening. Um, the large online portals like the Zillow's, like the Redfin's, Realtors.com, they're funneling more and more leads to those big agents, those big teams, right? And they're the ones getting all the business, right? That are, you know, they're closing four, five, six deals a month um, on some of these bigger teams. And then you have other agents who are just starving. There's a big gap, right? Between the agents who are really crushing it and the agents who are, are struggling. And the bottom line, guys, is the consumer today is demanding that immediate and expert response and guidance. Um, they want answers, right? They want knowledge. They want the best agents. And it's just not possible to scale that or do that at scale when it's a one-man show. If you're a one-man show and you're trying to do it all, it's really hard to keep that high level of standard, um, you know, over and over and over for your clients. So this is why it really matters right now in today's market. Now, it's not just you watching this, right, that is going through this, this problem or facing these challenges. It's really agents all across the U.S., right? All across the U.S., we're seeing agents run into the same uh, challenges and issues in the marketplace. Now, here's some questions three critical questions that you must be really answering truthfully if you want to survive in 2023 and beyond. And number one is how are you currently positioned to move people forward as the real estate environment changes? So as things change around you, how are you positioning yourself to continue to move people forward and, and bring that high level of service? Um, are you being stubborn to the changes in the market, right? The industry changes constantly. And are you just kind of sitting on the sidelines and not really wanting to adapt, right? That's a crucial, a crucial question to ask yourself. Um, and what are your processes look like, right? Are you consistently booking appointments? Do you have a process for showings? Do you have a comparison process that gets people to move forward to write offers, right? So when you're going out there working with buyers, do you have a process dialed down to just really keep your business running consistently and efficiently, right? So these are questions you got to ask yourself. Now, I want to give you some examples of agents on our team who are really crushing it because they're taking all of these things that we're training them on, and we're going to go deep into this training today. I'm going to give you some really tangible things that you can take and apply into your business today. But the agents who are doing this at a high level on our team, these are some of the results, right? We got Herbert Montano, rock star on our team. He's been in the business for two years, brand new agent. This past year, he sold over 30 homes. Uh, in 2022, right? Just really crushing it, killing it, enjoying life, having fun, traveling, all that good stuff. Um, I got my buddy Thomas uh, Mesa, who's just another uh, leader on our team. He was part-time real estate for a long time. He had a nine to five. He was kind of in between careers and he finally decided to go all in on himself. Uh, he's been uh, full-time for probably a little less than a year. And in that time already sold 12 homes, right? just going full time now. And he's off to a great start, some great momentum. Uh, we got Blanca Medellin, who happens to be my stepmom as well, who is one of the partners on our team. She's a veteran on our team, consistently selling 30 to 40 homes every single year. She's been doing that year over year because she's really, really bought into our systems and strategies. 
and is, is a really good example of someone who's just implemented this over and over and over. And that's why her business is, is booming and it's so predictable and it's just getting better with time. Uh, another example, uh, Carla Upshur, who joined us uh, within the last year, she in her first two years, guys, of uh, being in business. So she came from another team then joined our team, um, been with us for about a year. She's done over 25 uh, home sales in that time. A lot of them that were here with our team. And um, just a really good example of someone who's just gone all in and really understood the systems, understood the processes, and is having some major success. So just want to share some examples of when you implement these things at a high level, what your business could look like. Now, let's get into some strategy, guys. Really the strategies that these people are using, right? These people are uh, that I just mentioned that are having the success, they are the ones helping us build out a lot of these strategies and processes and refine them. And, and there's, there's some things that we've dialed in at a high level. Um, and the bottom line, guys, is it's the biggest thing is you got to go meet buyers, right? You got to meet buyers and get more at-bats. And because you, the more people that you meet with, the more opportunity that you get in front of, the more chances you will have to implement all these strategies and have that predictable business where you're closing several deals every single month, right? And so how are you going to go meet more buyers? And we're going to dive into that. Um, one key thing is going to be speed to lead. And what we mean by speed to lead, guys, is, is being able to get a lead, whether it's coming from an online portal or wherever you're getting it from, and being able to respond quickly. Before, they used, they used to say like, hey, you got to respond in five to 10 minutes. Now, you actually got to respond within like seconds because if someone is clicking on an online portal, right, let's say it's coming from Zillow or Redfin or wherever you're getting your leads from, and they're shopping on one online portal, the chances are they may, if you don't respond within a few minutes, they may go and click on another agent on that same portal. So you want to respond within like the first minute or, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds while they're still in front of their computer before they get sidetracked and like start going and doing other things or before they start clicking on somebody else. So speed to lead is extremely important because that's just going to uh, allow you to connect faster and allow you to just book more, more appointments and more opportunity. Now, once you actually do get the person on the phone, well, you need to know what to say, right? So this is why it's important to master your scripts. And like on our team, we do role play four days a week, right? So we start every single morning with a 30 minute role play where we're going over the most common scripts, the most common objections. And we do that before we prepare for our prospecting session where we go out and, and we call and book appointments and stuff like that. We also do a one hour training every single week where we pick a certain topic or a certain uh, objection that's being uh, commonly ran into. And we do a deep dive, just going all in. So it's extremely important that if you want to convert at a high level, you need to master your scripts. You need to know what to say, how to say it, and you need to know the different scripts depending on did the lead come from an open house? Did it come from an online portal? Is it someone that contacted you via social media? Is it a friend? Is it a referral? There are different scripts that are going to make you more effective for the different situation. So that's why it's important that you go and practice, rehearse, role play, and master those scripts. Now, one thing that we have realized, guys, is the 70% rule. And what the 70% rule means is that there's a client is going to do business like 70% of the time, the client will do business with the first agent that they meet, uh, assuming that agent has some value to bring to the table, right? So if, if a client, you know, contacts three different agents and they meet with that first agent, if that agent, you know, does speed to lead and masters the scripts and know what to say and all that good stuff, there's a really, really high probability that that client will end up doing business with that person, which is even more reason why you have to be quicker on the draw with your leads. You have to master the scripts because if you meet with that person, you want to make sure you secure that relationship up front. Now, one of the things that we have seen today that is, is a lot different than what we used to do is the overqualifying on the phone, right? Uh, you may have heard of like the LP mama script or there's certain questions you got to ask to every single client before you book an appointment. That's what we used to do. And that used to work before. Right. Um, but to, in today's market, because clients do business a lot differently and they want things fast. Um, what we have found is that we want to create less hurdles for the client. 
So we've actually dumbed down our script where we only ask a couple questions and we try not to over qualify the client. In fact, our goal is to just get the client to book an appointment with us so that we can go out there and meet them. Because we know that, uh, for example, if a, if a lead comes in from Zillow um, they and then they inquire on a specific property, they want to go see that property. They don't want you to ask them a bunch of questions before they can go see that property. You got to give them what they want. Then once you go out there to see the property, now you can you know build rapport with them. You can ask more questions. So our script up front is very, very minimal. It's usually just confirming the appointment asking maybe two follow-up questions and then really just trying to get face to face with them. So that's something that if, if you're currently asking a ton of questions before you meet with someone, you could be losing opportunity right there. So you got, you need to change it and you need to stop over qualifying people and just get in front of them first. And it's going to average out, right? Yes. Are there people you're going to meet with that just don't qualify or maybe that are not ready right now? Absolutely. That's part of the game. But if you meet with enough people, the numbers will average out. And some of those other ones that may not qualify now will end up doing business with you later. And since you're the first agent that met with them, we just talked about the 70% rule, your chances are a lot higher to do business, business with them down the line. Now, there's something that sounds really simple, but is actually going to help you convert more leads, right? And that's a calendar invite. Um, we use Google, you know, and so every single client that we book an appointment with, we send them a calendar invite, um, with the location, with our contact info. And we also put several notifications on there. So they're reminded four hours before the meeting, eight hours before the meeting. And if the meeting is booked further out, we'll put more notifications on there. This sounds very, very simple, but there's studies that have been shown that you actually get a 12% increase in conversion just by simply adding a calendar invite. And if they don't have Google or whatever, like, don't worry about it. Just get in the habit of adding a calendar invite to every single client that you book an appointment with. And over time, that's going to increase your conversion, right? If you're meeting with hundreds of clients throughout the year, 12% starts to really stack up. Now, another tip is making the connection and how do you accelerate the relationship, right? Like, think about it. If you're getting a lead from like an online portal or maybe you met someone somewhere for the first time and you're trying to book an appointment with them, they don't really know who you are yet. You haven't really created, uh, built enough credibility with them. There's not a lot of rapport that has been built. You're just a stranger before you actually go meet them and establish a relationship. So how do you build a connection with them and accelerate that relationship? And one of the ways, guys, is video, right? Um, sending once you book the appointment, following up with a video message, you know, just saying, hey, thanks for the opportunity, or I'm excited to meet with you, or hey, I look forward to meeting you tomorrow. Or, I look forward, you know, to meeting with you at that property. By you sending that, sending that video message, that's another, uh, uh, another encounter that you've had with that client indirectly, right? You may have talked to them over the phone first, then you send them a video message, and then before the appointment, you send them another video message just saying, hey, I'm on my way. You know, look forward to meeting you in the next hour. I'm on my way. Even offering them like a Starbucks, right? Hey, I'm picking up Starbucks. What would you like? But think about it. If they were to meet a stranger from another website and that stranger only talks to them over the phone and you've sent them several video messages you know, from your first phone call, you've already built some rapport with them because they can see you, they can see your smile, they see your background, they see your energy, right? So by adding video to your process, you're gonna build a relationship faster with that client and you're increasing your chances of converting. Think about this right now, right? You guys are looking at a slideshow right now. I could have easily not shown my face in the slideshow and just put the slide deck on here and um, just had my voice talking, right? But by me implementing video and you could see my face in the little circle right there, you now get to see who I am, right? So I'm building a connection with you right now via video. It's the same thing that's going to happen when you book appointments, right? Okay, so giving you some strategy on how to just book more appointments, right? How to get more people to meet with you. Now, now it's time to go out there and show them a home. So this leads to the next part of the training, right? Is really mastering the showing. Right? There's some strategy and technique here for you to master the showing and be able to uh, 
convert, you know, at a higher level, right? It's not just about opening the door and saying, hey, go take a look at the home. Let me know what you think. There's actually a strategy in place. And by you implementing these strategies, that's going to uh, allow you to convert at a higher level, just like some of the agents on our team that I just showed you. So you need to know that you're going into this with the strategy. So how do we master the showing? Let me go to that. So number one thing is a piece of advice is don't let that be the first time you've seen that home, right? So you meet a client online, they want to go see a home or you meet them somewhere, however you meet them, you're going to go show them a home for the first time. Don't let that be the first time you have seen the home. This is very simple, right? If you were to show up early, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes early um, and go in the house, turn on the lights, have the door unlocked, have the blinds open, take a walk around that property, call the listing agent, maybe do a little bit of research so that when that client gets to the property, you're not just discovering the property with them for the first time. You actually have some insight on the property because you've already toured it yourself. You've already taken some notes. You've already spoken to the listing agent. Maybe you know some information about the activity. And now when you're showing this property, you have a lot more information to give to this client versus some of these other agents that I've seen where they're just opening the door and they're walking in for the first time with the client, right? And they have no clue what's going on. They have no clue that there's a smell coming from the refrigerator or that the backlight doesn't work or whatever it might be, or that the room is really dark, right? You want to know all these things up front so that you can now give this feedback to the client in real time. And after you've shown the property, what many agents do is they go into the, what do you think? All right, we saw the property, we took a look at it. So what do you think? What do you think about the home, right? You don't wanna do that. That's the worst thing you can do, right? You wanna be the one leading the conversation. You wanna be the one telling the client what you think, right? Because you've already talked to them over the phone. You've already you know, understood what their criteria was. You've already done some research on the property. You've already toured it yourself. You want to show the client that you are working with them and you're not just there to sell them a home. By you just saying, what do you think? That's like, it almost gives the idea that you were thinking you were just going to let them see the home. What do you think? Do you like it? Let's write an offer right now. It, it becomes really, really transa transactional and you're missing a huge opportunity to build rapport and build trust with them. So when you're able to tell the client what you think as the agent and, and really figure out what their criteria is and let them know like, you have no agenda. You're here to help them get what they want. Um, that's when you really start to build trust, right? And it goes to this next concept of a trust building property. Let's say you go out there and you show them this home and they don't like the home. There's a really good chance they may not like the home, right? But you don't want to let that be an opportunity that you've wasted. Um, in fact, if you know what the client wants and you know this home is not for them, it's going to be better that you tell them up front, hey, you know what? You know, you, we talked on the phone. You said you wanted this type of property. I honestly don't think this is the property for you. I think we should look for something else. Think about that, right? Think about how you would sound to a client if you were to tell them up front, you don't think this is the right property for them. That immediately is, is going to create some trust because it's going to show the client that you're not just there to close a deal. You are there to truly help them find something that they want. You truly have listened to them and you're there, you know, to to create a relationship, right? To do what's best for the client and not just close a deal and get a commission check, right? So this is what our, our agents are doing. These age, our agents on our team who are, are closing several deals a, month, deals a month, they're doing all of these things. Now, one thing that you want to do, you know, to follow up with that and, and what you got to have in mind when you go show a property, right? Is you're going to do all the things that we've talked about, but at the end of the, of, of the showing, there should be two outcomes that you are looking for. The two outcomes are either A, they love the home, and now we're going to set an appointment to you know, go over disclosures and write the offer and see what that looks like, right? Do our research and see about writing an offer. Or you are going to book the next appointment, right? Those are the two outcomes that you should be going for every time you show a home. It's either we're writing an offer or we're booking the next appointment. And the next appointment can either be the buyer consultation. It could be an appointment to go see some other property. It could be an appointment to meet with the lender if they need to meet with the lender. But you should never show a home and then say, all right, let me know what you think. Give me a call. Let me get back to you uh, or you get back to me. 
right? There's a lot of agents who do that. And what happens is you're not moving the ball forward. You're not moving, keeping the momentum going forward. You want to always have a next appointment or a next step, um, you know, set so that you can push the client forward little by little. This is how you get clients to, to move forward and get them closer to finally, you know, finding the right property and, and eventually making an offer, right? So don't leave that showing without either an appointment set. Now, let's say they want to set an appointment to go see other homes. They didn't like the home that you showed them. Well, just book the appointment, right? You can say, hey, let's say it's a Tuesday. Hey, you know, obviously this isn't the right home for you. Are you available on Thursday or, you know, this Saturday, right? Let's go ahead and just pencil in a time so we can go look at other homes. I know of some properties that, you know, now that I know what you like, I know of some properties that I can show you. Let's meet at this time, right? And I already know what a lot of people are thinking, right? Well, what if there isn't a property that I can show them? Well, hey, look, at in between that time, you're going to go back and you're going to go do some homework and you're really going to start searching for something. And what you can always do if you don't find the property that, that you know is going to meet their criteria, you can always call them and you can always move the appointment to a different day because new inventory is always popping up every single week, right? So, but you don't want to just not set an appointment because you don't have anything to show them. You want to set the appointment, try to find them something, and you can always reschedule the appointment if you need to, but at least you get the ball moving forward. Hope that makes sense, guys. Um, right. And that, and that's what I was saying, basically getting them to move forward, right? You're never just staying stagnant. You're always getting them to move forward little by little. Now, I want to talk to you about a one to seven showing system and what this means, right? Um, the way that you get people to consistently move forward or decide which properties to move forward is by implementing this strategy right here. And it's, it's already establishing that, hey, we're going to go look at homes and we're going to use this one to seven rating on a property. Essentially, your client is going to rate each property one to seven. Anything that's a five, a six, or a seven, those are properties that we want to consider writing offers on because they meet your criteria. They have you know, pretty much everything you need. Anything that's you know, a four or less, like let's not even spend time you know, looking at those homes. Why is this important? You know, because if you go out there and you're showing a bunch of homes, it can become confusing for the client, right? Like once you've seen five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 homes in one day, you start getting them mixed up in your head, right? So if you already established the ground rules with your client that, hey, we're going to rate these homes five, six, or seven, seven is like the unicorn, right? That's like the most perfect home that checks every single box. There's probably not a lot of those there. Those are almost impossible to find. But there's going to be a lot of fives and sixes. Fives and sixes is where we're going to spend our time on. Anything below a five, let's not even waste time because I just don't want to confuse you, right? So you're already establishing these rules, and it makes it a lot easier for your client to decide which homes to focus on and which homes to choose because you're quickly removing the homes that just don't fit their needs at all, and you're only focusing on a smaller amount of homes. So, yeah, you may show a bunch of homes. That's part of the game. But you want to go from all those homes that you're showing and narrow it down to like, these are the fives, the six, and the sevens, and that's going to make your life a lot easier. Now, let's say you are showing a bunch of homes, and that could become frustrating, right? You might show a bunch of homes to a client, and you may be thinking to yourself, like, do I keep spending time with this client? Do I keep, you know, wasting my time? It seems like I'm showing a lot of homes, and they're just not moving forward. Well, you got to ask yourself a question is, are they learning, right? Every time you show them a home, are they learning, right? Are they learning what they want, what they don't want? Are they participating? This is how you distinguish who to waste time with or not, right? If it's someone who's just going out there and you're showing homes to and there's no feedback or there's no interaction or it doesn't seem like they're really learning anything or they're not inching forward to the process, through the process, then yeah, you may want to consider just not wasting time on those people. But if you're showing clients a bunch of homes, but every time you show them homes, they are learning, right? And they're giving you feedback and they're participating and they're using the, the, the rating system, the one to seven system. Well, these are clients that you want to pour more energy into, right? And you see all of these recommendations and strategies that I'm giving you guys, these all start to, to stack on top of each other and they all add up, right? Now, as you are going out there showing homes, you need to remember that your goal is to build trust and to remind them of all the things that you're doing. Right. Don't just assume that they know you are implementing all of these strategies. Right. 
Let them know why it's important for us to rate the homes. Let them know, um, you know, all the different things that I'm telling you. Remind them uh, of, of why you're trustworthy, right? Remind them that you are here to um, help them find the right home for them. You're not just here to make a sale. Remind them that you are here to fight for them and get them to the finish line. It's important that you write, remind people of that because if they do go out and shop with other agents or maybe they meet an agent at an open house, you want to differentiate yourself, right? So you just can't assume that they know that you have their best, best interest. You need to really elaborate, articulate that stuff and make sure they know that this is what you're trying to do for them. And guys, like I know this is a lot of stuff and you know, but this training guys, it's not just like one thing that is going to make you close a lot more deals and get buyers to move forward. Doing all of these things, right? All of these little things and adding these to your process and your system, right? It's when you stack these all together, that's really going to take your business to the next level, right? It isn't just like doing one magic bullet that's all of a sudden going to change your business. What we have found is that by us just you know, little by little improving our processes and taking note of what works and doesn't work. And we've come up with the strategy and we put them all together. That's where we're seeing the success, right? So you got to take all of these things and put them all together because they're all going to add up and compound over time. And, you know, it leads to like, you know, some more examples on our team, like Robert Ortiz, who's a veteran on our team, consistently closes over 20 uh, homes per year, right? Our average price point is around a million dollars in our area. So over 20 million in volume. Um, using these same strategies. He's been in the business for a long time. Uh, I want to shout out Connie on our team who's only been licensed for about six months. Brand new agent, licensed for six months. Um, over eight homes that she's already closed, several more in the works. I think she's working with a $6 million buyer and a $3 million buyer right now, implementing these systems. We're training her and she's like just taking off. She actually was nominated, um, awarded Rookie of the Year on our team this past year, just you know, just because of her growth. Um, another agent on our team who, who joined us this past year, um, about eight months uh, that she's joined us, she's been in the business before, came from another brokerage, jumped on our team, immediately started implementing these strategies, um, and now has closed over 12 deals in eight months and started off, you know, 2023 with four in escrow already. And she's living an awesome life, traveling all the time, you know, setting her own hours and just has a consistent business that she's already building. Um, another shout out to Anna on our team as well. Um, first year in business with us, brand new licensed agent, um, over 15 homes sold in her first year, right? So these are just some examples of when you put all of these things together, right? You start to have this predictable success, right? That, that all agents want, where they want to know that they got opportunity coming in. They want to know that they have a strategy to close deals consistently and they can build off that and develop off of that and, and, and turn their business into something really awesome. Now, I, we're getting ready to come to the end and I just want to reiterate a, com a couple things is my mission, guys, is to really come from a place of contribution, right? So all of the things that I talked about today, these are all things that you can immediately go implement into your business. Um, right? We're always looking to partner with agents. We're looking to build our relationships, to network, you know, obviously bring more people onto our team, but that's not what this is all about, right? Like you can take everything that I talked about today, add this to your business, do that on your own. And I guarantee that if you practice this stuff and really implement it at a high level, your business is going to excel, right? But, um, and on the same, you know, token, if there's a way that we can partner if our paths cross, like that would be awesome as well. Right now. So I just want to keep, you know, let you know that that's really the mission, guys, is to contribute. And in that process, you know, awesome things happen. Now, to follow up on that, guys, if there's a certain piece of this that maybe you want to go deeper in or you just didn't get or if you have other questions about your business, um, we are offering a private strategy call. And this is where you can jump on a one on one call with me. I'll spend, you know, 15 to 30 minutes with you. And I can go deeper into some of these points, right? Because you may have not gotten everything from this presentation. We're trying to keep you know, the time down to around 30 minutes or so. But if you want to go deeper into some of these things and want me to really break it down for you more in detail or even, even show you some of the processes on the back end or even just talk about your business, uh, I'm open and I'm offering a strategy call. And if I can help you out, great. Um, or if not, if you can pass this along to anybody else out there, 
Um, I'm always looking to chat. This is really, you know, just the way that I give back to the community and to book a strategy call. Um, you would just go to this link here, meetenrique.com. It takes you to my calendar. You can book a time with me and, and we'll chat guys. Um, and so I want to end this with just thanking you for watching this training. Um, these are things that we have really worked on over the last several years. And what has been a crucial, a, a crucial point to my business, right? Like how I've been able to constantly, um, you know, succeed and, and continue to grow our business and our team is to always adapt and pivot, right? And that's what I want to leave you with is you can't do the same things that were working before and expect them to work today when the market is changing. As the market changes, right? It changes every, every few years, right? There's shifts and, and new things that come out and new ways that people are buying and selling and stuff like that. You have to stay in front of that. You have to constantly pivot. You have to constantly tweak your processes and you have to constantly get better at what you're doing or do it at a higher level or go deeper with your systems and processes. This is what I've been doing for like 20 years now. I've been in the business, you know, since 2003, 2004-ish. And that has been the key to my success is constantly navigating, constantly pivoting and, you know, being able to now take these things that we've learned and implement them, right? So I just want to leave you with that. Wherever you're at in your, in your journey, whether you're a brand new agent, where you're a seasoned agent, have that mindset of growth, right? Have that mindset of, you know, maybe what I'm doing is working, but if I want to get to the next level, it's going to require me to show up differently. It's going to require me to implement new things and maybe even surround myself with different people as well. So I hope this training was beneficial for you. I hope you got some nuggets out of it. If I can do anything for you, let me know, drop me a comment, reach out to me, book a one-on-one -on -one with me, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for showing up today.